Hey folks, welcome back to another video. I want to highlight in this video how you can misuse certain random modulator outputs to create some kind of probabilistic behavior inside the grid. And maybe I explain this a bit better because I already teased this in a recent video, uh, but maybe I highlight this a bit more and explain why it works and uh, what the thinking is about it. So for instance, uh, use a dice module here, which outputs random values and we use a trigger module and we trigger the dice module so each on each trigger we can generate new random values also use an oscilloscope here just to zoom in on the behavior this over here and you can see there's a certain trend to this um, random modulator output here you can see that values above zero are or slightly above zero or even zero itself are triggered all the time. So we have at least something above zero all the time and uh, values around one or slightly below one are triggered very rarely. So you can misuse this in the grid for certain things here and there without using the chance module uh, of the grid. And you can also use this outside of the grid when you modulate maybe uh, devices and you want to change um, this in a probabilistic way. Uh, so for instance, inside the grid, we have here a value knob, a value knob, and we have here um, an envelope, and we can trigger this, this, yeah, we can trigger this here with the triggers module, of course, and you can see we get your trigger every time we play basically here a gate. And these gates have special um, properties, let's say. Every time you reach the one from a zero, so you go from zero to one, it is recognized inside the grid as a trigger, more or less. But that's not the whole story. Um, at least inside the grid, you need at least a value of 0 0.5, not even one, to create a trigger. So we can utilize this here, for instance, with the value. You can see the value here doesn't do anything. Um, only when we reach 0 0.5 from below 0 0.5 of below 50% here in this case, um, then we create a trigger. Bam, here at this position, right? Every time we cross from below 50%, over 50%, we create a trigger. And only then. So now we know that the trigger inside the grid is recognized when you reach the 0 0.5 line. Um, when we look now back again here at the dice module with those with the dice module outputs, you can see um, that we probably create a trigger every time we switch from below 0 0.5 to over or to exactly 0 0.5. So when we connect this here to the, to the dice or to the envelope from the dice then you can see we get sometimes a trigger and sometimes not. And every time we get a trigger is probably when we reach the 0 0.5 line with the dice module. So what we can do now with, with this knowledge is that when we scale down this the signal by using, for instance, an attenuate here, where you can scale it from 100% to 50%, you can see now this dice module needs to output at least a value of one which is output very very rarely um, then this scalar pulls this one down to 0 0.5 because it's 50 percent and then this one gets recognized as a trigger so now we created basically a kind of a chance module because scaling down this dice signal to 50 percent we need to reach at, at least a number of one here to create a trigger here <laughs> okay so um and now that we know this and we decrease basically the probability of this ad getting triggered we can misuse this in certain circumstances for instance um, instead of using this attenuate here we're using a modulator and we want to let's say enable here this looping feature inside our grid patch so we modulate this here and you can see we can change the modulation amount by clicking and holding, right? And you can also see it here on the left side. So you modulated this by one. 
and we we know that we need to reach at least 0 0.5 to get a trigger so we can pull this down to 0 0.5 so again this dice module needs to output a value of 1 to that modulator modulating this by 0 0.5 and this one gets then enabled so we decrease the probability of this feature getting enabled um, by just modulating this here by 0 0.5. Maybe we want to increase this probability of this feature getting enabled by increasing here to 0 0.51 or maybe 0 0.6 or something like this, right? So you can change the probability of something getting enabled by changing the modulation amount. This is sometimes pretty helpful because you can modulate multiple things with this one here and change the probability of each modulation target by changing the modulation amount without using a chance module, right? Dialing this in here and then for a different target, you need a different chance with a different modulator. So you can make a shortcut there. So this is, this is my point and this is what I use most of the times. It's a cheap way of creating this probability behavior to certain switches inside the grid. And sometimes I use this and sometimes I use the chance module. So it's not, you know, it's sometimes just to make a shortcut basically. So we can make here maybe a small little patch to amplify this a bit um, to give you a practical example. For instance, um, let's use here to trigger out and trigger this and we use maybe a noise and a filter go with the noise into the filter you want to do a band pass go in here make this pretty short out and also a volume knob nope. change here how loud this is <laughs> so now we trigger this maybe to 16 notes So now we reach basically with the dice here over 0 0.5 trigger this. So we have kind of a chance already or a random triggering module already in place here. So we use a modulator here and we change the frequency of this. So on each trigger, we get a different filtering se uh, setting. And now we can use the same modulator and instead of modulating this here, we're modulating this by 0. Dot, um, is this the right? Yeah, instead of using 1 here, so we have this looping all the time, which is pretty annoying. Right, so we go down here to 0. 0.51. And now we have this looping only very rarely happening. So you can misuse the modulation amount um, to create some kind of probabilistic behavior on these switches here. That's maybe way too often. 0 0.51. Something like this. Works probably too. There's a different one here to change the decay setting. Maybe something like this. And this is basically how I create my click rhythms inside these generative patches all the time here. Yeah? We can also use here different dies for this. Yeah, and then sometimes you have this looping feature enabled. So you have a looping, a looping envelope. And also each time we get a different decay setting, which also changes how fast you loop or yeah, loop through this envelope. 
So maybe get the phaser in here. And maybe a small delay. Or more delay. And of course with the blend. To recap this, you can misuse here the modulator out and dice uh, or random LFO outputs to create some kind of probabilistic behavior by tweaking how much you modulate something and misuse it to enable or disable certain features here with these knobs, for instance, here on the AD envelope, the looping feature. But there are, of course, more. You can switch here, or maybe this one on or this on and off or something like this, right? can modulate all this here with the modulator output and can change this behavior with the modulation amount. I think it's a neat little trick and um, yeah, you can, if you know it, you can use it. And if you don't know it, you can't use it. And it's also not documented, um, uh, but that's the beauty of the grid. You always learn something new. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you liked the video, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and bye.